Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name is Morgan and on here I talk about reading, writing, productivity, knowledge management. So if that's your jam, stick around. Today, I wanna to tell you about how I moved over 700 notes from my Obsidian Vault over to a new note-taking app called Scrintle. Now, don't worry, the Obsidian content is not going away. Most of my knowledge management still does happen in Obsidian, but I have been out trying out different apps lately, and Scrintle makes it so easy to import existing markdown files into this app that I figured I might as well give it a try, start tinkering around in there so that I can tell you how Scrintle works and why you might wanna try Scrintle yourself. So in this video, I'm going to tell you who I think Scrintle is right for. I'll explain what Scrintle is doing differently. I'll give you a walkthrough of a couple things I'm trying out in Scrintle, and then I'll give you like a pros and cons list. So I'll tell you what I'm not liking as much in Scrintle as well, so that you can know before you make a decision about whether this is the right app for you. I'm also very excited because Scrintle is sponsoring this video. They've asked me to give an honest review, so that's exactly what I'm going to do. And they have kindly provided us a discount code. So if you click the link in the description box below and use the code MORGAN30 at checkout, then you can get 30% off of Scrintle. Now that is only valid for the next four weeks. So if after you watch this video, you're really excited about Scrintle, I suggest you go grab that deal right away. It's only about $5 a month US for Scrintle, or you can also use that link just to join their waitlist for the free version of Scrintle if you're not ready to purchase, but you're really into this style of note-taking. So what is Scrintle? Scrintle is a visual knowledge management tool. It's probably the most authentic, paper-like, Zettelkasten compatible productivity tool that I've experienced thus far. It combines the bi-directional links of something like Obsidian with the infinite canvas and sticky note feel of something like Miro with the like in-note formatting options of something like Notion. I would say the biggest difference between something like Obsidian and Scrintle is that Scrintle is very visual, whereas Obsidian feels a bit more conceptual. Personally, I love that in Obsidian, these notes are just kind of floating around in nothingness and the only way that they make sense in a space together is if there is connections, like this con conceptual connection between them. But I know that some people struggle with that and would prefer to feel like their notes are in an almost physical space where they can see that they exist and can be moved around. And that is what Scrintle gives you. It feels almost tangible. Let me tell you a bit about Scrintle so that you get what I mean here. In Scrintle, there are two container types. There are cards and there are boards. Cards are the smallest unit within Scrintle. And you can think of these like literal, I've got some right here, literal cards, like little cue cards, pieces of paper. So you can write your notes on these cards, but because this is digital, you can also embed links or PDFs or images, things like that. Boards, on the other hand, are containers for your cards to be organized within however you'd like them to be. You can think about boards kind of like a bulletin board, where I might take a card and like push pin it to the board. And again, the benefit of these being digital is that you can have the same card on multiple boards and that card is going to carry its metadata with it no matter which board you're on. And when you're finished with it on a board, you can just stick it back in your archive to be used later. Another nice feature about Scrintle that really makes it feel like a physical space where you're keeping your notes is the desk. And you can think about the desk as though it is your normal desk. This is where you can let clutter pile up and then you can organize it and then you can turn it into projects somewhere else. Or if you need to, you can just clear your whole desk. We are going to hop into the pro version of Scrintle now and see how this works in practice. And we're actually going to start right here on the desk. The left-hand side of the screen is where you are going to navigate through your different cards and boards and tags, which we'll talk about in a bit, and get back to your homepage, which is your desk. Within the creation space of Scrintle, everything you need to do can be found on the left-hand side or through a series of like very thorough keyboard shortcuts. One thing that I personally always have on my physical desk, literally on little note cards, are to-do lists. 
So I thought that's where I would start in Scrintle as well, by making a to-do list. I've done this by creating a table and then I've expanded the columns so that I've got three columns and can do a to-do, doing, done column, kind of like a Kanban board. And then in the bottom of the table, you always have the option to create a new card. What is cool about this compared to my actual desk is that I can embed extra information inside of these cards and I can link between cards that are on my desk or ones that aren't on my desk and are just in my archive. For instance, I've said that every day I wanna do some form of exercise. So if I double click on exercise, it's going to pop out this little note. I've tagged it daily so that if I ever want to see a list of all of my daily things, I can just hop over to the tags area and find them. And then inside of this task, I've given some examples of what I could do if I want to do some exercise. One type of exercise I almost never do, partially because I always forget what to do, are just like body weight exercises. So I've also linked to a separate note called body weight workouts, so that if I'm ever thinking of doing that, I can just pop open that note and see examples of what I could do. And maybe today I've decided that I actually for exercise do want to do body weight workouts. So I'm just going to click this little map icon and it's going to stick that note into my board. And I am just going to put it under my this week area. Back in the exercise note though, if I expand this out, it's going to spotlight the entire note on the screen. So now I can go into a sort of like focus mode and I can start typing my notes and that's gonna be good for something like if I'm writing a paper or if I'm doing a Tettlecasten system and I want to like format how I'm organizing the information within these individual notes. But if I scroll down to the bottom of the note, you'll see that I can see the links. Obviously I've linked to the body weight workouts in there, but I've also backlinked to something called journal. So there is a note out there called journal that is linking to exercise. It also is going to tell me which board this note appears in. It currently appears in the board daily and weekly to do's. And then one cute little feature is that it tells me what related cards there are. And I like that idea for a kind of like wildcard situation. If I'm out of ideas, maybe I just enter a card and I scroll to the bottom and I see what Scrintle is recommending that might be related to this card. And maybe I can get inspired that way. And then I can either click the back button in the upper corner and that's gonna take me back to the desk where I just was, or I can click desk, which is also gonna take me right back to my desk. The other use case I wanna show you for Scrintle is just a subtle cast in itself, because of course that's most of what I talk about on my channel channel, so I want to make sure that you know about this functionality for knowledge management. One thing in Scrintle that I don't use at all in Obsidian, but are kind of vital to the workflow of Scrintle, are tags. On the left-hand side, if I click on the tags tab. Of course, I would have a lot more tags if I was already using Scrintle as my knowledge management system, but because I imported Obsidian notes, they didn't have tags, so I'm left totally tagless. But I do have 15 cards under a tag called climate change. So if I click on the climate change tag, all of the notes are going to show up on the left-hand side and I can scroll through them, I can select them. So if I just want to maybe make a board out of three of these cards, I can do that. But actually what I want to do is see all of the cards that are related to climate change. So I'm going to right click on climate change and I'm going to create board with cards. And automatically it's going to open up those cards in a new board all stacked on top of each other. I can go and separate them out myself of course, but that's a bit tedious. So instead, I'm going to select all of the notes and then I'm gonna use a keyboard shortcut to ask Scrintle to automatically organize these based on the connections that are already existing between them. So that's Control Shift O and I can look at what Scrintle has created for me and decide if I like that structure or if I wanna move it around. And in this case, it kind of looks like maybe all of these ideas are pooling around a central idea called the Anthropocene. You can see that there are like five different notes pointing towards this note, but then uh, some of them like environmental devastation expands out quite a ways into these other notes. So maybe I wanna use this as like a mind map brainstorming tool like you would do in school where Anthropocene is in the center and then all of your ideas are branching off of that. And the benefit of Scrintle is that it 
automatically populates those mind maps with your ideas that you've documented in your like bi-directional linking archive of cards. So it's brainstorming without any of the actual like work of brainstorming. You've already done all of the work of thinking. Scrintle's gonna do the work of organizing that thinking into a page for you. And then I could also use this mind map as a thinking tool. So I can ask myself, well, what is disconnected right now? This idea about the ecological form currently has no connections and I don't even remember what that note is about. So maybe that's something I wanna go and tackle now in my note-taking session. Or maybe I see that it actually is really relevant to the idea that humans are part of the environment. So what I'm gonna do is grab one of these little nodes and drag it over to that note. And now it is connected to the whole. So that's one way to form connections with this in Scrintle. I could also go into the note and form that connection as I'm typing, just like I would in Obsidian. So tags are clearly very useful within Scrintle, but like I said, I don't have a lot of tags on any of my cards. So the last thing I wanna show you is how to add some tags to these cards because it's so crucial within Scrintle. To do that, I'll go back to my desk and just find some blank area over here to clutter up while we're working. And I'm going to search in my archive. I'm gonna search for a topic that I know is very popular in my own knowledge management system, which is the idea of knowledge itself. And I'm gonna select cards and choose a couple that look particularly relevant that maybe have knowledge in the title. And I'm just gonna click add these 11 cards directly onto my desk it's going to auto organize them, which is already pretty darn cool. You can see that all of these cards are like already connected to the idea of knowledge. And this could be a great way to just get inspired. But what I wanna do now is create a tag that is going to encapsulate all of these cards. So I'm gonna select all of those cards and I'm going to choose tag in the little pop-up and then I can add tags to all of these selected cards. I'm gonna add the tag, knowledge, create the tag knowledge and apply. And now if I go into any of these notes, I've got the tag knowledge right at the top there. Of course, now I can create a board with the cards. I can self-organize the cards. And then I can even do things like these guys are connected. So maybe I want to change the color of just these cards and I want them to be pink because that's my favorite color. And now those cards are pink. So you can really visually organize this information in whatever way you need to. And it's honestly very intuitive and simple to do so. If you've made it this far in the video, then you might actually be considering using Scrintle as your knowledge management tool. And I think that is a very important and special decision for you. So before you decide to go all in, I wanna tell you some of the things that I think Scrintle could work on or don't particularly work for me within Scrintle as compared to something like Obsidian or or notion. This said, Scrintle is listening to their audience and making changes all the time. So I don't think any of these points would stop me from using Scrintle, but I thought to be fair, I should point them out. First of all, right now for me, it's way too easy to make a card because you can just like click on the page essentially and make a card or press the letter C and you've made a card. And I'm very precious in Obsidian with the notes that I make. So I would love it to be a little bit more difficult to create a card in Scrintle. And once I've created a card, if I decide I don't want it, I would love to be able to just cancel the creation of that card. Whereas it feels like Scrintle, it's like once it's made, it's made. Secondly, the arrows within the boards are completely permanent as well. So I can't make a board where I put some temporary arrows. Once I've made an arrow between cards, it actually embeds a connection within those cards. So it becomes a link on one of the cards and a backlink on the other card. And that arrow is going to connect between those cards in a board unless I get rid of the connection between those cards. And I do think that's kind of cool. I do like that functionality, but I would also like the opportunity to make sort of temporary connections within boards because I wanna be able to use my permanent Tettlecast and knowledge within like project notes and still be able to sort of connect between them. And that's something that I can do in Obsidian Canvas. Lastly, I found myself kind of wishing that I could embed boards within boards. And I know that could get really chaotic really quickly, but that is one thing that I appreciate about Notion is I can like create pages within pages within pages. And I don't wanna be able to do that with cards in Scrintle. I do like the bi-directional linking that they've got, 
but with boards, I kind of wish I could make like a daily to-do list board and then just like put that in my this week board. So I'd love if some boardception was going on in Scrintle. These are all such minor qualms though. Like I really think that Scrintle is a very powerful tool. What's more, if you like collaborating or if you wanna be able to share cards or boards with other people, Scrintle has made that very easy. So if you are interested in collaboration, if you're a visual thinker, then Scrintle very much might be the right app for you. From what I've seen, so far. And if you think Scrintle is the right app for you, then please feel free to get it with my discount code, which is Morgan30 at the link in my description box below. It's going to give you 30% off that pro version of Scrintle. That code is only valid for the next four weeks from when this video came out. So you should hop on this pretty quickly if you want that code. And again, right now, Scrintle is only like $5 American or $7 Canadian for the early access plan. You could also just use my link to join the waitlist to get Scrintle when the app does come out. Thanks for watching everyone. If you do decide to go in on Scrintle and you want more tutorials about specific ways of doing things or thinking about Scrintle, then let me know and I will see about collaborating with them further because I do think it is a really beautiful and interesting productivity tool. And with that, I will see you in another video soon. Bye.